I made a video showing how to use expressions to link dimensions to each other to enhance features like scaling and automatic updating. The example I used was a standard class 150 flange. And I thought that was pretty good. But then someone in the comments section said, you're doing this to hard way. You should use a configuration table. So I did the same example, but with a configuration table. And that was indeed better. But let's remember that this particular example was for a standardized part. So in that instance, both these methods suffer from a fatal flaw. You almost never have to design a standardized part from scratch. And you shouldn't. There's too many opportunities for human error. And if you take a little bit of extra time before you start the design process, you can usually find a CAD model of that part available online and just download it. This is clearly the best option if it's available. Then not only do you know the specs are right, you have a part number, a price, and a supplier. This flange is from McMaster Car. Thor Labs is a website I use a lot for optical parts that also has a great downloads option. And if you're looking for less standardized parts, the GrabCAD library is another good place to look. But if you're designing in FreeCAD, all of these options present a new problem. They're not the right file type. When you save your parts in FreeCAD, they save as .fcstd files, or FreeCAD standard files. Whether you find your parts at Thor Labs, McMaster Car, GrabCAD, or whatever site you use, it's pretty much guaranteed that they're not going to have FreeCAD standard files as one of the download options. This will also be true if you pay a professional engineer to design a part for you. Depending on the software that person used to make the part, it may be in any one of these other file formats. And if you try opening any of these, of these file types with FreeCAD, you're going to get an error. These are what we call native CAD files. Native CAD files are proprietary. They're not compatible with any package other than the one they were made in. Solid part files are only work in SOLIDWORKS, F3D files only work in Fusion 360, and by the way, FreeCAD standard files only work in FreeCAD. So are there any other file types compatible with FreeCAD? Yes. In addition to native CAD files, there are also generic CAD file types. You'll see a full list of file types that FreeCAD is compatible with later. The three I'm going to talk about are STL, IGIS, and STEP. STL format stands for stereolithography. This is the standard for 3D printing. I won't say more about that here, but if you're into 3D printing, I'll leave a few good links in the description for you to learn more. IGES format, which is .IGS or .IGES, stands for Initial Graphics Exchange Specification. It was developed by the Air Force as a vendor-neutral CAD program in the 80s to allow designs to be transferred across different platforms. It's still an option on many websites, but the STEP file format, which comes in .STP or STEP, which stands for Standard for the Exchange of Product Model Data, is kind of a successor to the IGES format. And that's the one I'll focus on most in this video. Now, there will be times when you find the part you want and it's freely available, but only in one of those native file types. There are some paid services, like this one, that claim to be able to convert native file types to generic file types. But they have limits. For example, I'm looking for a download button. It's not there because this is a paid service. It won't tell me the price up front because it's expensive. If I look in the CAD formats link, I can usually find a table of which formats it can view and convert, specified as read-write here. Here's another one. If you actually want full conversion capability, you'll be paying almost $50 a month. So unless you're willing to pay big money, accept that some files can't be converted and start a new design from scratch. I would love for someone to prove me wrong on this, so if you know of some cheap design software, please post a link. But basically every CAD software package has the option to save the file in the generic formats. That step is up to the person who produces the design. To do this in FreeCAD, select the objects you want to export and go to File Export. Enter your file name and give it the extension .stp or use the Save As feature. Also, here's that list of file types compatible with FreeCAD. I'm going to use SOLIDWORKS as my example for viewing native file types. I'll compare the corresponding generic CAD files in both SOLIDWORKS and FreeCAD. When I download these files, I'm going to check for four key components. Can I edit the part? Did it keep the metadata? Are the dimensions correct? And what's the file size? 
So first let's download that class 150 flange in solid part format and open it up in SolidWorks. Let's look at the feature tree. I'll just expand it here for a second so we can see it better. Every 3D feature is listed. I'm going to expand those so we can see that they're listed along with the sketch it was based on. I can go into these sketches and edit any feature of this part that I want just like I had drawn it myself. I can also go here to look at the metadata. Almost any auxiliary information can be listed here. It's all here in the native format. So now let's see if I can edit the underlying sketches. Changing the number of holes looks like an easy example, so I'll do that. Let's change it from eight holes to four holes. It worked! So I have a complete control over this as if it were my own drawing. I'll change that back to eight holes to keep this a standard part. And let's check if the dimensions are correct. Of course they are. You can verify yourself with the online drawing, and I can change them if I want to. Now let's download that same part in step format using SolidWorks. So now if we go to the feature tree, all of those individual features have been lost. Let's just expand it. They're all gone. And I can't edit the underlying sketches. The metadata is also incomplete. In the case of a standardized part, neither of these are an issue because I really don't want to alter it. I probably just want to use it in an assembly. So let's open it in FreeCAD. Here I have to download the step or IGES file because there is no FreeCAD standard option. So I'll download the step file. Now I'll go to FreeCAD and open the file. See if I can find it in downloads. Just like in SolidWorks, there's no option to view the underlying sketches in the feature tree. There's not a lot of property data for this model anyway, but if there was, it would be uh, down here, in the bottom here. I forgot again to check the dimensions, so I had to reopen the file. I'll open the part design workbench. I'll go way over to the far right and find the measure toolbar. I have the option to measure linear and angular measurements. I can refresh after changes, I can clear them and toggle them and on and off in a couple of ways, but I'll just do a few linear measurements for now. So first I'll check the uh, thickness of the part by clicking between those edges, uh, 27 millimeters, I think that's right in inches. And then I'll check the uh, diameter of these bolt holes. And in each case, after I check uh, the dimension, it gives it to me in millimeters. The uh, original file was in inches. Uh, you'll just have to trust me. I did check these, and they all came out to be correct. So that was 22.2 millimeters. And finally, just as one more example, I'll do the inner diameter of this thing. And that does, in fact, match uh, the spec to inches. You'll just have to trust me on that. Finally, if we take a look at the file sizes, we see that for this particular part, the IGES version was the second smallest, the STEP file was the smallest, and the native version was much bigger than both. This makes sense because we lose data as we move from native to generic file types. However, this isn't universally the case. For example, that Thorlabs part is actually much smaller in the native format than it is in the step format. Even though the step version is clearly missing some details. Both versions of this were missing the underlying sketches. I suspect this has to do with how the original files were formed. The lesson is not to get bank on getting everything you want from freely available online CAD models. I hope this was helpful.